Hello everyone, Gary here live at Learning Technologies where I was lucky enough to speak to some brilliant people from the world of L&D for 15 to 20 minutes each and you are about to watch or listen to one of these episodes now. If you like what you're hearing from our guests, just check the description, there's a link in there where you can connect with them. That's also where you'll find the link to the death of the LMS guide, a report which helps you build a skills first approach to L&D. So as always, any feedback or if you like this format, you can let me know on LinkedIn and otherwise enjoy the episode. All right, thanks everyone. So I'm joined by Felix Olhauser today, Head of Sales International at Pinkton. And we're gonna be discussing how we can design content that can be applied in the flow of work. Felix, to give a bit of context for what we're gonna talk about now, 49% of people, according to LinkedIn Learning, want to learn at their point of need. But often content and learning experiences aren't really designed with that moment of application in mind. And that's kind of reflected in this other stat that 88% of people report not applying what they're learning in their everyday work. So hopefully we're gonna give some principles and some advice to people today that kind of breaks that down. But I guess the first thing is people can't apply what they can't find. And often accessing content, discovering it, finding it is the challenge for people. So with that in mind, how do we kind of break down those barriers to help people find content, first of all? Yeah. <clears throat> um, first of all, it, I think learning in the moment of need is the crucial part of learning in the future. I think this ad hoc learning principle is the one where you really better yourself as an employee, as a learner in, 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 in a whole. Um, the question is, how do you get to the content when you're in this situation? Because usually, for example, we have like a, a feedback talk. Yeah. You have done some, some things and I want to give you like constructive feedback. How do I structure it? So I do not have the time to go on a platform and, and look for like half an hour to find how do I give feedback. Yeah. I need to have it right now. Yeah. So I need to have good tagging. And of course, I need to have like uh, content which, gi which gives me the, like, the insights right now. And I think that's very crucial to have on points information on, in your phone, on your pockets, yeah. in the moment of need. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, there's this other stat from Asana that essentially the average worker switches between 10 apps 25 times a day. Now, yeah. that's already a bit of a productivity drain, but imagine if I'm switching between those apps and I'm encountering those problems like bad tagging, too much content, where is it located? And this makes it, you spend even longer disconnected from the workflow when yeah. those situations are happening yeah. as well, right? I think immersive learning is like the, the key part in the future when it comes to learning. We, tr we need to lower the barriers to get to the right content when you need it. Because studies show that the, the higher the barriers are, you, you have like a bad UI, you have a bad UX, you don't find the right content, it's not curated content, so you get lost in a, like a vast amount of information. So at the end, you're so overwhelmed, you do that two or three times, and then you stop doing it. And I think for learning, that's the worst you can have, stop practicing. So um, I think that's why it's very important to have like a good platform yeah. to do that and the right content for it. For yeah, it, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It's that feedback loop often, it doesn't take many times of not finding what you need or having a bad experience for you to discourage you from doing it again in the future. But fortunately, one of the ways we can create good experiences and feedback loops is to focus on how we build content so it can be applied in those moments of need. So, you know, people want to learn at the point of need because it, it will help them, but it's also when they're most motivated to learn. It's also when we can have the most direct impact on someone's performance by connecting them to the right information. So when we think about designing learning so it can be digested and applied when I encounter a challenge, what would be your sort of advice and principles to people? Well, to, to be honest, you need to have the right content, you, you need to have the right platform to find it, and you need, of course, to have a learning environment within your company, for example, if you're talking to employees. And uh, to have that, it, it is very important. Uh, what we do uh, to foster learning within organizations, of course, is to accompany learning and development managers yeah. to change the culture and the way of learning works and provide them, for example, we have, uh, it's called micros and nanos, so very short information which can be accessed right away when you have the need. Yeah. And that mindset shift to let's create shorter pieces of content, I think that naturally causes you to go, 
this solves a specific problem, therefore I need to keep it minimal and therefore yeah. I don't need to just vomit out yeah. words and words of content or the irrelevant parts. It can kind of help you be more focused as you structure content. Do you, do you find that as well? Yeah, it's, it's always like uh, people try to get as much info in, in trainings and like essays, whatever, because they think the more information you have, yeah the better the product is yeah, at the end. Yeah. And I don't think so. That's why curated content is very important. So yeah. you, you only have the, the content you really need. And it needs to have yeah. like a qualitative uh, background, a sound basis, yeah. a methodology and didactics which enable you to learn better. And that means that sometimes a two minute, three minute, seven minute yeah. is more valuable for uh, um, learning in your need than yeah. having a 60 minute course covering everything yeah. because then you get lost yeah. and it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's a common thing, especially when you're trying to tap into subject matter experts. The mindset mm. isn't for you to show how much you know, it's for you yeah. to convey what will help somebody else learn yeah. in that situation. And I think that speaks to that. It's the shift in how you view uh, your learner. Yeah. Your learner is in the center of attention. It's yeah. not what you want to persuade, but what he or she needs in that moment of need. So you have to think differently. Yeah. And a lot of people do it, do it the other way around. And I think it's a bit difficult in that sense, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. To move on slightly, something you do well at Pinkton is, when we talk about micro learning and flow of work, it doesn't mean we just ditch the idea of a traditional course, it still has its place. But I know that when you structure courses, you're doing it with that consideration of somebody might need to revisit this later to tackle a problem in the flow of work or solve a challenge. And, yeah, I, I guess it, it's mirrored in the fact that most of your videos are kind of three to seven minutes in length. Uh, they, they're quite concise and tight. So yeah, is that something you're mindful of is making sure people can revisit resources later? They work as standalone pieces. Um, it, it is necessary for the future because of course we do guided learning. So if you want to improve your presentation skills, we, we do have a um, training on presentation skills where you get, are guided from A to Z. Yeah. And you've done that once, but of course, if you've done that once, it's difficult to keep that in mind. Usually all of the learning after two weeks is gone if you do not practice and practice and practice. So you need to have the possibility to go back and find this specific part when you need to improve yourself. And this needs to be integrated in your daily working habits. So that's why we have those nanos and micros. And part of the training, of course, is standalone, so you can skip to the third part where you say, okay, how do I do the opening of a presentation? Or how do I actually give critic feedback, feedback in a different sense? I do not want to go through the whole training, but I need this yeah, part of the training right now, and we are able to provide that. Yeah, yeah I think it's another mindset thing is, it's even if you enable someone to apply something when they're doing a course, for example, it doesn't mean it's going to stick the first time because yeah. it's not always about remembering everything. It's about knowing where to find it. Like we said at the start, discoverability of content is important. So I guess that's part of it as well, isn't it? I'm not trying to just make people remember everything. I'm just making sure that when they encounter the challenge again at spaced intervals in the future, the resource is there that talks them through it. It is like sports. Always, your brain works the same as your muscle does. Yeah. You cannot start playing the championship uh, game without having practiced before. Yeah. And looking at the professional footballers, they go on the training pitch yeah. every single day. Yeah. And I think we have to get that into the minds of L&D managers, into employees that it's not a one-time event. Yeah. I don't go today and learn and be better the years after. I have to stick to it. Yeah. And that's why I need like programs, e-trainings, platforms, which enable me to do that. Yeah, and I think it allows that less push, more pull kind yeah. of mindset. Yeah. And something we were just speaking of about off camera before we started the recording was how this all feeds into creating a better learning culture, wasn't it? So um, yeah, just curious to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, it, it was a very interesting point talking to you before that. And I, I think having the right content is actually a very crucial part for company culture in the future because when you're L&D manager and you want to you have an agenda and you want to foster learning within your company and you want to have like a, a, a direction where you're heading and you provide your uh, employees with vast amount of information where you do not know if whether it's this philosophy or that philosophy because you can do different techniques and feedback you don't know which one is right for you and that's why it's so important to have like qualitative content, so good content with a good methodology, 
which is curated because then you as an L&D decision maker know exactly when I opt for uh, this platform, this content, mm -hmm. I get what I buy yes. and my people don't get lost and I actually can really change company culture, which yeah. I think is uh, very important yeah. for the future. Yeah, no, I agree. We, we had someone on the podcast recently, Jennifer Smith, the CEO at Scribe, and she was making the point that if you try and get everyone to search for content in one place, and then they can't find what they need. It's kind of like a snowball effect. Yeah. We self-fulfilling prophecy. We all go, well, that place doesn't have what I need, so I won't go there. But above that, I'll tell other people it doesn't have it either. Yeah. So it ties in more to company culture than people think. I reckon. Before you head off, I want to tell you about two very exciting things. Death of the LMS, your free guide to skills first L&D is now live. From the numbers that explain L&D's current problems to lessons on how you can build a skills led strategy, this is going to help you drive more impact through learning. You'll find the link right at the top of this episode's description. And just below that, a link to our new weekly walkthrough, where we show you how this can be done in practice and give you a tour of how now. Our learning experience platform that gets five times more engagement than a traditional LMS. So thanks for listening, and we look forward to seeing you again for another episode of the podcast.